Meanwhile, in Tupac news, the shooting of Tupac Shakur once again underscores the violence that has surrounded this man since he shot the superstar. To Pulled up, open fire, Shakur and Knight. Tupac Shakur was shot several times in the chest. Shakur was pronounced dead. Machiavellianist, Illuminati, all through your body. The blows like a 12 game shot at me. Uh, me. I ain't talking about buying it. But if that's what that man feels, it's not our place to change. Ain't nothing real about that either. about taking up cooking or something, man. Learn how to speak Italian, man. Hell, I might even mess around and get married. You don't have a memo with you? I'll go get Freddy. Tell me to meet us there. I don't know, man. It don't seem right. We just lay low tonight, you know? Club gonna be there tomorrow. Whatever, man. Snap out of it, baby. Uh, I don't wanna have to go Tyson on you. Y'all go ahead. I'm gonna get Freddy. I'll meet y'all there. I'll meet you there. Only Gab can do it like this. I hope don't you play me close. I dig them back, I get you back, and I'll get you with a dose. A woke town power and charge you by the hour. I'm taking like a too legit, too legit to quit. Dun, dun. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building, and this is Machiavelli Media. Too legit to quit, y'all. MC Hammer movie. It came out, I think it was like 2001. It was on, uh, I think it was a, a VH1 movie. It was kind of cheesy, but it was the very first time an actor portrayed Tupac Shakur in a movie or a television series. Facts. It was cheap, but it was the first time we saw Pac dramatized like that with somebody else portraying Machiavelli the Don. Now, check this out. The actor playing Tupac in this Too Legit to Quit movie is the late, great Lamont Bentley. Now, you notice how when people die over the years, they become bigger and better than they were in life. Well, I'm guilty of that trend right here. I never truly appreciated Lamont Bentley when, you know, he was around doing his thing on South Central with Lorenz Tate. Then he was doing his thing on the hit TV sitcom Moesha. Didn't appreciate him, ain't paying him no mind. Really didn't appreciate him in the MC Hammer 2 legit to quit movie. Still ain't paid a brother no mind. Even when he did, and I say iconic in the sense that this movie is a cult classic. And that is Tales from the Hood. That's a classic movie. You know, it'll outlast, you know, all of the black hard flicks, in my opinion, over the years. And it was a great, great movie. And that's when he showed me he could really act. But I still wasn't a fan of Lamont Bentley like that. Can't lie. I guess his character, Hakeem, on Moesha kind of made him like kind of cornballish to me. That's just my opinion. But as I look back, I'm more mature now. I'm watching his work. The brother was a fine actor. He was a very skilled young actor. And like I said, I didn't realize how good of an actor he was until I go back and look at Tales from the Hood. If the brother would have had a few more years and a few bigger roles, he could have possibly became a superstar in front of the camera. I mean, man, I wanted to see more from Lamont Bentley. Like I said, I think he was a talented actor, but we didn't get a chance to see him at his best. Because in 2005, Lamont died in a horrific car accident. There was like a freak accident. 
He had just left Snoop Dogg and um, Dr. Dre hanging out in um, California in a Porsche or some kind of drop top. And, you know, had a horrible car accident. So he was doing like 130 miles an hour. Wow. That's sad, y'all. Now, back to the MC Hammer movie. Too legit to quit. I'm asking you guys the questions. To, I'm asking you guys the question today. How do you feel about Tupac's portrayal in this movie? Now, over the years, we've seen Demetrius Ship Jr. play Tupac. We've seen Mark Rose. We've even seen, from the Avengers, Anthony Mackie play Tupac. And I'm, I'm sure it's more actors over the years that, you know, tried their hand at it that we don't know about. But the very first one you've seen on screen, or should I say on television, is Lamont Bentley. Now, this Tupac that he's playing, it's like, it's a sample size. You don't, you don't get a chance to see or hear enough from the character to really gauge Lamont Bentley as an actor. But I must admit, the voice he did for Tupac was pretty good, it was pretty spot on. Man, I ain't talking about buying it. But if that's what that man feels, it's not our place to change it. Ain't nothing real about that either. Um, the character he played was a Tupac that was trying to change his ways, that was trying to seek out some kind of um, advice, should I say, from a more mature person. Ham was older than Tupac, probably by like 10 years in real life. So, you know, I guess in real life, since this is Hammer's story, I guess Tupac came to him for kind of advice or maybe reinsurance. Like, you know, when, when, when you're a younger guy and you're talking to an older guy, sometimes you throw stuff out there to get his opinion on it. And I think that maybe what uh, Hammer's role was to Tupac. Um, you also see in the movie when Suge, the guy that got playing Suge is terrible, by the way. But Suge asked the members of Death Row, how did they feel about Hammer coming over and let them vote on it? They sitting around at the table and he let them vote. And the first person that said he was on board when Hammer coming over to the role was Tupac. Well, I gotta agree on this. That's wild. He was the first person that said, yeah, I'm with it. I'm down, man. Probably because Pac lived in the Bay for a minute, and you know, Hammer was running things for a long time, especially late 80s and early 90s out there in the Bay Area, and hip hop period. Hammer was a big deal at one time. Then you go to another scene where you got Hammer and Pac in the studio, and Hammer's play playing, what song is he playing for him? Uh, Pops in the Bump. <laughs> now that's crazy because Hammer was wildin' in that video, he was wildin', man, with the with the fake joint and everything they say, and the speedo. But hey, Hammer was trying to do it big. <laughs> well, anyway, in the movie, right? It's Pac and Hammer sitting in the in the studio, and he's playing the track for Pac. And Pac like, yeah, I'm, I'm vibing to this. He get up, shake Hammer hand, then he falls to sleep on him. Now. You know, Tupac wrote a lot of raps for Hammer. Um, I think the most popular one, the one we got confirmation, is Unconditional Love. But this made me wonder, did Tupac also write Pumps in the Bump for Hammer? Very possible, but you saw that scene. Then you have a more intimate moment with Pac and Hammer leaving the studio. Pac had a long night probably hanging out, smoking, drinking, wound up in the studio with Hammer, crashed, went to sleep, don't Hammer woke him up first thing in the morning, yeah, and they decided to go man. shoot basketball. Now, this is bull crap right here, because we all know Pac couldn't hoop, but you got Lamont Bentley finger rolling and some other stuff right here. <laughs> this is what you call television. Well, anyway, Having an intimate moment, Tupac is telling Hammer, 
He's thinking about changing his ways. Right before that, he was telling Hammer that um, he's not crazy. Telling Hammer don't believe everything he read. And he was even asking Hammer, hey, do you read, period? This just goes to show you that Tupac was an intellectual. They wanted to add that in there, um, which is true. Tupac did a lot of reading. But he told Hammer he wanted to change his ways. And he wanted to give up the whole bad boy persona, the tough guy, thug thing. And, you know, settle down, learn a different language, even get married. That's what happened in that scene. Once again, trying to confine in somebody older to get some sound advice. You know what I mean? That's what Tupac was doing. Uh, it's another scene for the actual video shoot for Pumps in the Bump. And Shug and Pac is teasing the hell out of Hammer because Hammer is a holy rolling church guy. And now he's doing pumps in the bump with girls in bikinis in the swimming pool. They got a big kick out of that. Um, final scene involving Tupac in the movie is Pac, Hammer, and the horrible Shug going down the escalator once again. And I guess a, a gang member or whoever looked at Hammer. Hammer could pick up on the vibe, made him uneasy. And Tupac was asking Hammer, was he coming to the club tonight? Now, this is the fateful night. Hey, yo, Hammer, man, you, you know, Tupac lost tourism? his life. I don't know, man. It don't seem right. Just and Hammer was right, like, you know? nah, I think I'm going to stay in the night. The club will be there tomorrow. So Pac is clowning him. Oh, come on, man. Uh -oh. Oh, church Lord. man getting the feeling Lord, again. Preacher man feeling that spirit again. <laughs> <laughs> he getting the spirit. Uh, you know, making fun of the fact that H Hammer was hesitant about hanging out that night. Pac tried to talk him into it. Hammer didn't go. So Pac he'd catch up with him later. And the rest is history. Very, very minimum screen time for Tupac and the Hammer story, but very valuable because that answered a lot of questions. Yes, Tupac was trying to change his ways. Yes, Tupac did want to settle down and marry somebody, probably Kadada. And yeah, it was tension out there in Vegas. Something wasn't right and Hammer could feel it. Now they didn't include a lot of Tupac in this story because it is the MC Hammer story. Hammer wants to be the biggest star in his story which is only fair. But tell me what you guys think. How did Lamont Bentley portray Tupac for the very first time in the movie? So I think Lamont captured Tupac for the most part, but you know, for his looks, I think he pulled the look off good enough. I don't think they went out their way to try to make him look like Tupac. Cause once again, it was an MC Hammer movie. So they just threw the bandana on him, put a nose ring on him and cut his hair. They ain't go all out like putting tattoos on them or, you know, trying to give them a unibrow or, or anything like that. It was just like, put a bandana on them. All right, now you Tupac. Gave him a, a FUBU football jersey. They ain't even had FUBU jerseys in 96, but they gave him one of them, one of them Ice Cube classics that Ice Cube won next Friday and um, told him, get to work. I need you guys to share and like this video. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace. <laughs>